Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me for the National School Lunch Program Equipment Assistance Grant Informational Webinar. The Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2017 authorized grants to the Office of the State Superintendent of Education, Division of Health and Wellness, to provide equipment assistance to school food authorities participating in the National School Lunch Program. In the previous fiscal year grant cycle, seven schools were awarded funding through the grant, and equipment purchased included serving lines, convection ovens, refrigerators, dishwashers, and milk coolers. These funds will make a significant investment by allowing the purchase of capital equipment used to serve healthier meals, meet nutritional standards with emphasis on more fresh fruits and vegetables in school meals, improve food safety, and expand accessibility to food services. Equipment requests may include new equipment, renovation of current equipment, or replacement of equipment. Who is eligible to apply for the grant? This would be participants of the National School Lunch Program who are eligible District of Columbia Public Schools, nonprofit private schools located in the district, public charter school campuses chartered by the District of Columbia Public Charter School Board. Please note awards are determined based on the school campus, not the SFA as an entirety. In order to make the most effective use of these grant funds, equipment requests must address at least one of the following focus area. First, equipment that lends itself to improving the quality of school food service meals that meet the dietary guidelines. Examples include purchasing an equipment alternative to a deep fryer, steam ovens that improve the quality of prepared fresh or fresh frozen vegetables. Second, equipment that improves the safety of full food served in the school meal programs. For example, hot and cold hold holding bags or equipment, dishwashing equipment, refrigeration, milk coolers, freezers, blast chillers, etc. Third, equipment that improves the overall efficiency of the school food service operation. For example, purchase of an energy efficient walk-in freezer, replacing an outdated energy demanding freezer. Fourth, equipment that allows sponsors to support expanded participation in a school meal program. For example, equipment used for serving meals in a non-traditional setting or to better, better utilize cafeteria space. And finally, equipment that aids in strategies for adopting smarter lunchrooms. For example, lunchroom changes that appeal to student population, highlighting convenience, healthy choices, and supporting menu changes to healthier options. For the purpose of this grant, equipment means non-expendable, tangible personal property with a useful life of more than one year and a per unit acquisition cost of $5,000 or greater. Equipment requests may include new equipment, renovation of equipment, or replacement of equipment. Smallware items such as trays, plates, utensils, pans, containers, and the such will not be considered for this grant. Allowable costs include the cost of equipment, taxes, and installation cost of the equipment purchased through the grant. Details of the grant award. The grant period will end on September 30th, 2019. All funds must be obligated by this date. The funds will be distributed through a competitive process that is fair and equitable. Grants will be given priority for requests that are $5,000 or greater. It is possible that a grant request may not be fully funded, but may be approved for partial funding. Schools selected to receive proceeds of this grant will be required to provide the following documentation upon expenditure and request for reimbursement. Signed confirmation of adherence to procurement rules, invoices detailing the items purchased, 
including shipping and handling costs, any installation charges, and the invoice should include the date of delivery or installation. The date the equipment was installed and used towards meeting grant initiatives. An evaluation questionnaire submitted with the reimbursement request and any additional reporting requirements for USDA. Per USDA requirements, grantees will be required to complete quarterly reports. The data needed for OSSI to report includes the type of equipment purchased, accomplishments and challenges in expenditure activities, impact on the food, school food service operation of purchased equipment, reasons for any unliquidated funds, and potential return of equipment. All applications for the grant are submitted using the Enterprise Grants Management System, EGMS. This is located at www.grants.ossie.dc.gov. The application includes a project overview section, project justification, budget overview, detailed planning expenditures, supporting documentation, and assurances. When completing the application in EGMS, you must agree to and save assurances in central data. If you have questions or any technical difficulties with the application or EGMS, please contact the Aussie Help Desk Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 202-719-6500. Please note no paper applications will be accepted for this grant. I am now going to log in to the EGMS system and show you what it will look like as you're filling out this application. Once you have logged into EGMS, you will be taken to your home screen as seen here. You will then select your school. Ensure that the fiscal year is 2018 and scroll past created applications to available where you will see listed under competitive grants, the equipment assistance grant. Please note, unlike some other applications, there is no create button directly next to the equipment assistance grant. This is because the equipment assistance grant is granted per school campus. Therefore, you will click the drop down and enter your project title. For example, campus one. You can then create the application for campus one. When submitting applications for multiple campuses, you will create a project title for each campus, which in then creates an application per campus. I will now take you into the application so you can see the requirements. When you see the application in EGMS, the first thing I would like you to note are these top tabs here, which are main tabs. Within each main tab, such as the overview pages, there are then sub tabs, general information, information on submission of applications, program and administrative requirements, and so forth. Please ensure as you go through each of these tabs, if there's any information that you are asked to answer that you save before moving on. I will show you this with the program specific information. Within the first tab, there is a project summary. After entering information here, please click save page before moving on to the next sub tab or the information will not be saved. Project justification then has questions for you to fill out and supporting documentation must be uploaded. Three quotes for the equipment if it is over $5,000. You will need three quotes for each piece of equipment that is over $5,000. Your letter of acceptance into the National School Lunch Program, which provides proof of eligibility for the grant, as well as any photographs, diagrams, fact sheets, or other supporting documentation for your vision. Detailed planning expenditures is where you are going to outline your budget for the grant. 
This includes professional services such as installation or delivery of equipment, as well as the equipment tab where you will list out each item to be purchased through the grant, as well as a description and the cost. Once this is all filled out, you will then see a budget summary showing the total funding request for the grant. The assurances tab again, after reading through the program specific insurance assurances, you will check to agree to the assurances and save the page before moving on. You will then again read through acknowledgement assurances. And at the top of the page, you will check to agree to the assurances and save the page. Finally, after going through the assurances, you will click legal entity agrees and this is your final agreement to the assurances that you have checked. Finally, once you're ready to submit the application, you will be required to run a consistency check. Right now you see the assurances must be reviewed and approved as I did not click to agree to any of the assurances within the assurances tab. After doing that, you will run the consistency check, which will ensure that there are no required fields missing within your application. If there are, you will receive error messages and be directed back to the application where you need to enter more information. After the consistency check is complete, you can then submit the application to OSI. After clicking submit, the application cannot be edited. Therefore, please ensure the application is finalized before clicking submit. Again, if you have specific questions about EGMS or need technical assistance, please reach out directly to the help desk. Also, again, no paper applications will be accepted for this grant. Once the application closes, grants will go through a review process. Grants will be reviewed and scored by an external peer review panel. Priority will be given to high need schools where 50% or more of the student population are eligible to receive free or reduced priced meals in school year 2016-17. Priority will also be given to schools that did not receive a previous NSLP equipment assistance grant under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 and the fiscal year 2010, 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016 Agricultural Appropriations Acts. This is a reimbursement grant and all reimbursements must be through, submitted through EGMS and include supporting documentation. Important dates to note, February 9th, the application opened. February 20th is the informational webinar session. February 21st, the pre-application question period ends. After this point in time, no individual questions can be answered regarding the grant. On February 28th, a frequently asked question page will be published on the OSSI website, including all questions asked during the pre-application question period. March 21st at 3 o'clock p.m. is the application submission deadline. After March 21st at 3 o'clock p.m., applications will not be accepted. In early April of 2018, award notices will be sent, and on September 30th, 2019, the grant period ends. If you have any questions, please email me directly. My email address is elisha.dcamello at dc.gov. Again, all questions submitted to me before the February 21st deadline will be included in the Frequently Asked Question document, which will be uploaded onto the Aussie website. Questions received after the pre-application period ends will not be able to be answered. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you.